And there we go. I think we're on. Yeah, there we go. Hello, everybody. How are you? This is our uh, our um, our Monday show, which is kind of called the pop up. It's just a subtle thing. We play it on uh, Facebook because it's just easy to do because I can do it from my uh, from my program here. And it just makes it easier. And then I just bring in a whole bunch of old friends who love the show and call it every week and are very good. And you can call it, too. Just go to gabnet.net. And um, uh, on the right-hand side of the page, there's a link to our Zoom, okay? Also, if you go over to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash A. Bennett, okay, you will find there a little thing that says click here to zoom. So you can then join us that way too. But meanwhile, we got, we got like almost all hands on board right now. Let me just see here. How do I bring them all in at the same time? There's supposed to be a a button here for that. Oh, there it is. Okay. I had everything down too low. Okay. And here they come, ladies and gentlemen, here comes our citizen panel and, um, Wow, it's a full house already. You guys were all waiting. Andrew Deutsch and Charlie Wallace and Mike Chisholm. Rick, how are you? Uh, I didn't know if he was going to be here today, but here he is. Charlene S. is here, as well as Len LaFrisco, Edward Berger. That's right. Say Andrew Deutsch. Uh, Yes, Edward Berger, say it. That's right. That's right. It's the only two things he says on the whole show. That and that's all, folks. Paul Levin and Jeff Stein, and we're I guess we're waiting on uh, a person who claims to be my wife. So <laughs> for, he hasn't called yet. So we'll wait and see what happens. Anyway, hello everybody. How are you on this uh, a Monday? How are you, Jackie? What? How are you? Still alive. Still alive. <laughs> we have some proof. <laughs> there. It's yeah. Okay. <laughs> In our apartment, you could just show your breath because it's so cold. Uh, oh yeah, the landlord forgets to send up heat, and then all of a sudden he goes, "Oh, I forgot to send up heat," and then he sends up heat. <laughs> so anyway, and uh, uh, Charlene, how's everything down in San Diego? I'm in I'm in uh, the Bay Area. Bay Area. Oh, I thought you were saying. Why did I think you were in San Diego? Well, I don't know. I'm in Castro Valley. Castro Valley. Well, that's closer to San Diego than close enough to me. <laughs> New York is to San Diego. Anyway, uh, hello to Mike Chisholm up there in uh, Canada, uh, the country that we're going to invade someday because they'll never expect it. Uh, Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charles. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. My Andrew Deutsch. Oh, good to have you again. And uh, Len Frisco. Yeah. Uh, I said Edward Berger. That's right. Yeah, I would get that. <laughs> That's right. And uh, Paula, good to see you. Jeff Stein, how are you? Marjorie I'm, Miller, how are I'm you? I'm frozen. Here? I haven't seen you all day. Uh, and finally, Brian Neary is here as well. So we got we got twelve people with myself in this in the very beginning. That's a lot of people. Uh, yeah, we just, uh, what did we just watch? We just watched the last episode of White Lotus. Anybody been watching White Lotus? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's been really good this year, hasn't it? I think better than the first season. Oh, better than the first season, no question about it. I also like the location better, you know? It's just a little more romantic and a little more wild, and it's I just it's very good. Uh, it's a show that I fully enjoyed this year. You know what else? We should tell them about a couple of things, about three things we watched on Netflix all in one day. And every one of them I absolutely loved. Uh, First of all was Senior, which is the documentary by Robert Downey Jr. about his father. And I happen to know his father quite well. He was a good friend of mine back in the day. And so it was just fascinating to watch it. And Marjorie, you enjoyed it, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, it's a really good documentary. And then we watched uh, 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 Emily the Criminal with Aubrey Plaza. Anybody seen this? You should. It's very good. It's really terrific. I was surprised that you were even surprised at how good it was. Right, Marjorie? Yeah. 
And she's really talented. Yeah, she's also on the White Lotus as well. Yeah. And then finally, we watched something that I think both of us felt, ah, well, well, it's a bit long and I don't know. We'll we'll see if it's any good. Emilia de, uh, uh, del Toro. Emilia del Toro. Uh, Pinocchio. Oh, and I think it's better than Disney's. It's oh, that okay. good. It is hmm. amazingly good. Marjorie loved it so much, she kept thinking about it the next day. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really, it's really good. Uh, it's, I, if I if I recommend it to all of you and all of you watch it, none of you will come back next week and say, wow, was that a waste of time? No, you, yeah, you're going to love it, it. But is it like gruesome and scary? I, I'm, I thought the Disney... Well, you know, it, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, because you would know this as well as I do. I think the original Pinocchio was pretty scary if you think I about agree. it. Yeah. Yeah, for what for that era, yes, it was. I mean, Disney liked to scare <laughs> kids. I mean, Snow White was scary. Yeah, you know, but Pinocchio was when he turns into a donkey, you know, and then his his father gets eaten by a whale. I mean, come on, but wasn't I never read the original book? I don't think anybody here has, but the original book supposedly was very dark. And so he made this quite dark. Uh, and the only character that's a really real character in the whole thing is Mussolini. Uh, Mussolini shows up for a short time. Uh, and it, it, it's, but it's a brilliant film. It's just a brilliant film. And, and the animation is just, it's stop motion animation. And it's, it's extraordinary. It's ama amazing film. I, I think uh, this is the this is the classic he'll be remembered for, you know, uh, and people will be watching this years from now. So what has everybody else been doing or watching or seeing or enjoying? Yes, Paula. Yes, I, I saw on on uh, Amazon uh, on Amazon. There's a movie called Delicious. Really? Uh, it's a <laughs> it's a French movie with subtitles. OK. So yeah. So you have to do that. But if you remember, uh, like a movie called Babette's Feast, mm -hmm. long mm -hmm. time ago, it's about food. Um, it's right. It's set right before the French Revolution. And it's mm -hmm. uh, it, um, the, the, the idea of it is like the how um, the idea of a restaurant got originated. And it's it's uh, it's well done. It's very clever. And the food looks delicious. <laughs> yeah, I I hate these food these shows about food. I really do. I hate. It's not, this is not a food show. This is a movie. Yeah, but I mean, uh, what uh, we were watching some movie with a lot. I mean, I'm watching uh, White Lotus, and they're sitting outside having breakfast, and I'm saying to Marjorie, "Look at those rolls." You know, croissants, Alex. They were croissants. Croissants. Well, some of them were croissants. I think some of them were rolls. They're but all I may croissants. Be, I may be mistaken. Uh, <laughs> so anyway. Um, so has anybody seen the Fablemans yet? No, I, I haven't. No. Shecky has. Did not care for it. Really? Wow. What's it's it? two and a half hours long to begin with. Yeah. 90 minutes is long enough. Mm. Yeah, you didn't like it, I take it. I'm not going to say did not like it. I just couldn't have cared less. <laughs> oh, okay. And also, name a really good Spielberg movie in the last decade. <laughs> Well, I, kind of, I was kind of partial to West Side Story. Okay. I thought it was a brilliant redoing of West Side Story and probably the way it should have been done originally. Because I, I, the original one, I wasn't that fond of. And this one I really liked. I thought he did a, a great job of it. Um, but, I loved Ready Player One. You would. <laughs> you would. It That's was a, a film. good movie. Hey. What? The Ready Player One was a good movie. Really? Yeah. I yeah. Like that, was, too. that was him to, trying to be hip and with it. You know? Uh, so he succeeded. Yeah. Um, uh, anything that he's done in how many years did, what was the, the time limit there? I said a decade. A decade. Uh, well, I, I Lincoln sucked. Uh, I can't think of anything, to tell you the truth. I mean, he is a you know what he is? He's the best action director I've ever seen. 
That's why I think he did a good job of West Side Story, because it's got a lot of movement and action to it. Uh, but he, he's maybe one of the greatest action directors we ever had. I mean, there is, if I had to show somebody a perfect movie without a, a wrong note in the whole film, I would show them uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there's not a false it's note in that whole perfect film. movie. It's a perfect example of, hey, you want to see how to make movies? Watch this. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, totally. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so, so more than 20 years ago. No, oh, I mean, yeah, of course. Again, he's a very good filmmaker. I'm not denying he's a good filmmaker. And The Fablemans is a nice looking movie. It's just a bore. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was, I mean, worth, it was uh -huh. worth watching, Alex. On, on Hulu, they made a movie with that Kamau, uh, I, can't, I forget his last name, called The Chippendales. Yeah, I've been watching that. It's great. It's really well done. I don't really care much for the, the dancing and the that part of it well, but isn't the interesting, thing is, but the story is amazing. But the thing is... And he's a great actor. I said, why are they doing this? So I have to, what is it? Is it that I'm going to watch it and it's going to be about the Chippendales dancers and all the... The love affairs and so on that went with, uh, you know, and no, that's not what it is at all. And then I went back and looked at the Ch original Chippendale story, and it's all about murder, yeah, wow. you know, and and greed, and yeah. it's really it's very good. I, I wasn't uh, going to watch it, but I I heard an interview with him talking about it on yeah. a podcast that that Dana Carvey, uh, David Spade podcast. Yeah, and so but that does sound. I'll watch a little bit of it and see if it's as good as he said. And I was really—he's a great actor. It's a really good, it's really a well, very done. good show. Marjorie yeah. watched two episodes with me, but you didn't get hooked on it, right, Marjorie? Yeah. I mean, it's it—it's a story full of intrigue. I mean, uh, I didn't realize this happened. Uh, uh, I mean, I—I I, I could say I'm not going to uh, spoil it for you, but the fact of the matter is just if you know the story it'll spoil it for you but i mean uh there were there was murder and intrigue and uh and and ultimately the guy who owned the club committed suicide i mean uh, over all the things that had gone on and uh it's a very, it's a very good show i i was surprised i there's still what two more episodes they haven't released yet or three maybe more than that I think there's eight total. I don't know. Now, here's the one everybody could have some kind of an opinion on. Of course, I'm sure Shecky didn't watch it. Uh, Harry and Megan. I won't watch it if my life were different. <laughs> Not even at gunpoint. Are we related, Rick? Are we, are we cousins? <laughs> I think we have similar DNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody watch Harry and Megan at all? Yeah, I thought the same thing. I thought I wouldn't enjoy it, but when Alex recommended it, actually, it, it a lot of stuff that I thought went on was really wrong. So it, it's pretty cool. It cleared up a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, they 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 created the show. They uh, they sat for the show. They they're making a hundred million dollars for doing the show. Okay, yeah. uh, and everything in the first episode makes you kind of like her. You know, you begin to see that she did other things before Harry that were good life's work, working for the UN and so on and so forth. Uh, maybe to enhance her career because she was, you know, yep. trying to get a name for herself. But she was an actress, yeah. Yep. Yeah, but you, you come away with a slightly different vision. Now, the question is, do you still rat on your family? I think that's the big question that gets asked there. And a lot of people feel it's wrong of them to do it, to have done it. Um, funny, it's don't... funny talking about this. Uh, Candy and I watched, we binged watched The Crown over the last five days, the, yeah. the new season of that. And I mean, that's what really at the end of the, at the end of the day, the epicenter of that season too was about Diana going out and talking to the BBC. And it's just funny how the echoes of, of these things are, uh, appearing right now. Well, I think there were, you get, you get sucked into that family. And you either want to live the life and accept it, or you want out, you know, because I mean, can you imagine? I mean, you're, you're, you're um, uh, Diana, who I, I understand was, a, you know, a handful. I mean, she was really, she was part of her was really nutty. Okay. But nonetheless, 
would you want to be her and be nutty and have to deal with the press, deal with the family, deal with all that she had to deal with, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in a way, what Harry seems to be saying in this documentary is what I was trying to do is protect my family from that, mm -hmm. you know, protect the people I love from that situation. But they say now that he's been disinvited to their Christmas festivities in London. So yeah, I was too. You meet you. I was, I was never invited. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Harry's not royalty, anyways. Well, he is royalty. No, he's not. Charles isn't his father. Come on. Well, no, we know that. <laughs> we know. I heard Alex was. Alex was. Yeah. Where, where do you get a blonde and a dark-haired guy who's going bald, and you get a guy? Who's uh, yeah going bald? Ginger comes from the mother's side, but he had he was a ginger to, to the max. Yeah, he even mentions he's a ginger. Yeah, it's... and looks nothing like any of his family. Otherwise, he'd be uglier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, they they all the, that that family was one of the more unattractive families. Let me put it that way. I mean, was Charles ever a really attractive guy? You know, I haven't been checking them out. I don't know. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if Charles even sent them a Christmas card. He was sending out his Christmas <laughs> greetings as King this year. And uh, I, he sent a Kwanzaa card. He sent a Kwanzaa. <laughs> <laughs> well, something, I, I, it had to have really been a, a big problem for them that they had a black a uh, member of the family. I think that bothered them a lot. Yeah, and, right. and rather than accept it and celebrate it, which would put them in good stead with the British public, uh, they tended, I think, to fight against it. They didn't accept it. I mean, they acted like they were accepting it, but they weren't. And I, you know, but anyway, well, we the, the other two episodes of Harry and Meghan dropped this week. And, um, uh, Three, Alex. The last three. Last three. Yeah, they they here, here's a case where uh, Nets Netflix decided to not let you binge watch the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what they're starting to learn is this whole binge watching thing isn't good business. If they put a episode up, or even the first two episodes, as some people do, and then you drop one every week. Somebody comes on to, they say, oh, I want to see uh, that on Disney Plus, okay? And then they go to, they want to see Andor, all right? Well, Andor is 12 episodes. That means they're going to subscribe for at least three months to finish the series. Whereas if you drop them all at once, they'll only pay for one month, watch the series, and then drop you, you know, because it, you have the ability to do, to do that. So I think they're starting to realize that binging isn't maybe the way to go anymore. But you know what people do with Hulu is they wait for a bunch of shows to be completed. Then they subscribe for a month, watch them all, and then turn it back off. Yeah. Because they, they, once, the, once the series is complete, all the episodes are available to binge. Yeah. Right. But then again, so what Hulu it's... does is they're constantly releasing stuff. Yep. And so you might be there for only those two, three programs that had finished, but then you find something else and you get hooked. You know, I think of all the services, the best services who I think they have the best shows. You know, I like HBO Max because they have a lot of the DC stuff that both Rick and I like. But uh, uh, I, you know, I don't... Uh, uh, I don't think it's the best, but I think that Hulu's the best. And I secondarily, I like HBO Max. Netflix this week got my business because I watched three programs that were really very good. And then uh, uh, then I like Disney Plus, you know. And I subscribed to, to Paramount Plus because it gives me showtime as well. And I, you know. I just happen to uh, like some of the programs on there. Uh, but anyway. So Is show, Showtime's included with Paramount Plus? If you pay 50 bucks more a year, but it's cheaper than buying Showtime yeah. on any other, in addition to any other service. If I buy it oh. on uh, 
on uh, uh, FIOS, for instance, here, it would cost me uh, 11 bucks a month. Here, it's only costing me like about four and change. Hmm. I have to look at that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I canceled my, uh, I ripped, you know, I pulled the cord. And I found out I got HBO Max for free through AT&T because I'm an AT&T subscriber. So I get it for free. So I didn't need to subscribe to that. I didn't need to subscribe more to Showtime than the extra five bucks a month average that I'm paying for it now. Uh, and uh, let me see here. I guess Nets, Netflix we had to pay for. The only two I had to pay for were Netflix and Paramount+. Plus. And then we got Hulu Plus with all the other stuff. And so we get all the Disney bundle for free. So it turned out pretty turned out pretty good. And Marjorie, have you missed uh, the cable? No. Don't miss it at all. I haven't yeah. had it for years. Yeah. I have an yeah. antenna on my house. Yeah, we don't even have an <laughs> antenna. That doesn't matter. We get, yeah. you know. The we antenna get gets the me 52 channels. We get all the local channels wow. and so on. But, but I, you, know you know what I don't like about Hulu is their layout. It's, it's well because there's so much now that it gets cluttered, mm -hmm. and uh, they mix up stuff with commercials and stuff that doesn't. Some happen. stuff. Well, some see some of the things they put up there, and they say, "Oh, you can watch uh, such and such." Okay, but it's on a channel that you're just simply getting anyway. So it allow it shows you you're getting it, but it doesn't say that if you're going to watch it. You have to watch the commercials too, and it gives you no indication of that. So, and their layout is horrible. The layout is a little clumsy. Okay, it's but terrible. they've got a lot to navigate, and I I appreciate that. You know, because when you let's say you subscribe to their service of seventy five channels, and one of them happens to be, uh, oh, let's just say uh, FX. Yeah. F FX, no, well, FX yeah. they already have, but uh, 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 other other channels. I'm trying to think of like you know what what Nickelodeon or something like that. Okay, so you want to watch a show that was on Nickelodeon? Well, that show is included there because you're subscribing to it as a as a online service as a cable service. Is this making sense? Mm. OK, so they then put it up there and they say, oh, you know, SpongeBob or whatever. I don't know what the Nickelodeon show will be. Well, you click on it. And then sometimes when you play it, you can zip through the commercials. Other times, you can. other times you can't. And it yeah, doesn't yeah. tell you when you can and when you can. Yeah. So you don't yeah. waste your time starting something and then trying to zip through the commercial. On the other hand, Saturday Night Live, when it's through being broadcast, I can zip right through the commercials. Yeah. So, uh, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't say that. It doesn't. Tell even you. if you do it without, you, you buy Hulu with, uh, without the um, commercials. No, that then those things will, then the, no, then those things won't be there. Oh, <clears throat> okay. Because so I sub, I subscribe to Hulu with no commercials. Okay, so all the channels that Hulu would take, like they ch take F, all the FX channels, are theirs. Okay, mm. uh, because Disney owns that part of Fox uh, um, and, and there are a couple of other, you know, other channels that they come to the ABC channels and so on and so forth. A lot of ABC. No commercials. I just, because yeah, I really pay for the no cool. commercials. Yeah. But then if you get down to some channel that like lifetime and they've got a lifetime movie and Marjorie wants to start watching it, it might force her to watch the commercials. I mean, if you can zip through them, it's fine, but you know, so. at least it's a break from those lifetime shows. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Anybody here subscribe to Lifetime? I mean, want Lifetime if you have cable? No. Do you know what is it, Shecky? The cable companies pay more money for Lifetime. It's per like nine dollars a month. Yeah, nine dollars a month of the cable bill you're paying is going to do Lifetime. The rest of it goes to ESPN, which I've never watched. I yeah. couldn't get Time Warner back then without getting a lifetime. Mm -hmm. You had no choice. Well, no, you yeah. you still don't have a choice. You know. So it, it, the other thing we found, of course, is you're paying for how many channels when you're paying for cable, and how many of those do you watch? Yeah, one percent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. You know, and it, it still, I wish I could on, well, I can, I can put up my favorite channels on Hulu, 
And then it just brings up those channels and I can just look through those. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> How times have changed. I, you know, I was just reading that uh, AM radio is probably going away pretty damn soon. Uh, mainly because the cars that are coming out. I remember when you bought a car and it came with a radio. All cars came with a radio. You got AM, you got FM. All right. Now you get them, and you, what you what you really get is uh, you get to go. You basically going online, and a lot of these radios in the dash do not have AM on them. You know, so it, they say that's going <laughs> away. Also, regular TV the over-the-air tv channels may mm -hmm. give way to no more abc television but abc digital and that's it so mm -hmm. everything's going to be digital and regular tv networks are going to disappear you so, know it's really a safety concern it's like when when we allowed the technology to all be made overseas we won world war ii because we could make everything here if if tomorrow the grid gets knocked down and we don't have am radio um it's a safety issue. Well, that's what they were saying. It's a big safety issue. It's like, that, like that trying to get rid of the post office. Well, AM, if there's a snowstorm and uh, the roads are closed and it's whatever, there's always local radio you could tune to to get the information. Snow. And AM has the, has the strongest ability to go distances and around and yeah. deal with clutter and everything else that doesn't get well, interrupted like other forms of radio fm fm is is de dependent on line of sight mm -hmm. yep. okay if you're behind a building and you're trying to get a certain fm station you might have a hard time with it whereas mm -hmm. with am that little sneaky bastard creaks into everything even your cool. ass crack you know <laughs> i mean it it it, it, it it's everywhere I had to get yeah. my filling removed so I could stop listening to the local <clears throat> evangelists. That used to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and Jeff. At night, I used to be able to listen to, I'm in New York and I could listen to Chicago radio. Oh, right? I used to go up, uh, uh, we have a big mountain, Mount Tamalpais. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the tallest mountain in the Bay Area. And I would go to the top of Mount Tamalpais. This is when I was growing up and I loved radio and everything. Yeah. And I would sit there with my radio doing what we call DXing, trying to see if you could find faraway signals. I caught a signal from New York once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Sitting out in California. Yeah. I used to listen yeah, to Shady KA in uh, Pittsburgh and when I lived in Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My shortwave, I used to pick stuff from overseas. Yeah, well, that was shortwave, though. Yeah. Shortwave had an ability to travel pretty far, but didn't have quality sound. Am I right? Vernon. Vernon's our, our expert. Oh, yeah, he knows. Tell us about that. Yeah. Shortwave. Yeah, shortwave. Short, shortwave, shortwave you, get, uh, you get skipped. The, the signal will skip off the ionosphere. AM doesn't do that. Um, the, the brown waves will bend at night because of the curvature of the earth at night. And that's because of the, the propagation characteristics of that frequency. Yeah. Hmm. So interesting. So what how what was short wave exactly? What was how, it was, as opposed to AM and FM? Well, short wave typically was at like an AM station, but the frequencies they operated on were higher so that uh, you could usually only pick them up if conditions were just right. Unless so, they were broadcasting at a you know million watts or something like that. Yeah, but so why didn't we in the beginning we went to we brought along AM radio? Why didn't we go short wave with our radio? A lot of the short wave frequencies are governed by international regulation. So you know there were some short wave transmitters in the United States, but they still had to abide by these international regulations. Yeah, I mean, like we had Voice of America in Europe. Was that shortwave? Uh, yes, that's considered shortwave. Okay. It was on like nine megahertz. So they were like they were doing programming. So you could do. Were there people doing programming on shortwave? Oh yeah. Okay, but well, just a bunch of guys going, "Hey, Vernon, hi there," whatever your call sign was, you know. Well, big, the biggest the biggest broadcaster back there in the shortwave days when it's really popular was BBC. Oh really? They had they had transmitters in lots of different countries. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
You still listen to AM radio, don't you, Rick? Sometimes for games and stuff. No. No, not anymore. No. No, they're on FM. They're yeah. simulcast. Oh, I see. Okay. But um, like you get in your car and you'll put on, you can put on ESPN radio here in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Because I noticed you always used it for sports. I don't think you, I rarely ever heard music playing out of your radio in your car. No. No. <laughs> even even like KMBR, KMBR has a uh, FM station also now. Yeah. Yeah. And KMBR yeah, so is a sports station. Sports station, yeah. Are they are they simulcast or are they two separate stations? They're simulcast, yeah. Simulcast, yeah. A lot, a lot of the AM stations started simulcasting on FM because uh, they didn't want to have to hire two two crews to run it. You know, uh, I remember when I worked at uh, WPLJ, we had a complete staff. And then at WABC, which was on the floor below us, they had a complete staff. And today, why have a complete staff when you can just combine them all on one mm -hmm. signal and you take the one that's the best? If the music's not doing well for you, then you do do the sports one, vice versa, you know, so. Oh well, it's not it's not the way it was when I was a kid. But if we come back a hundred years from now, none of these things will exist. We won't exist, I don't think, at the rate we're going. Yeah. Did anybody watch the landing of the I know Shecky doesn't care, uh, but the landing of the uh yeah. You heard him? Yeah. Yep. That was very cool. That was pretty cool. I mean, it looks like the old Apollo days. You, know? you, want, you want to hear something that pissed me off? Okay. <laughs> so they, they're showing it, right, on MSNBC. Yep. And they have a lower third yep. that says, breaking news, Orion returns to Earth or whatever. Yep. And then it's landing in the water, and you can't see it land in the water because the lower third is covering it. Yeah. <laughs> I actually covered the NASA TV directly, so I didn't have to watch that shit. Yeah, but I went, you, <laughs> you idiots, you morons. You know, if I were sitting there and I'm and I'm the guy running the the car, right. whatever, I would close it out rather than not let people see it splash in the water. But nobody saw it splash in the water on MSNBC or probably any of those nitwit networks. Yeah. So. Hey, has anybody watched uh, Letterman with President Zelensky yet? No, not yet. It was a Dude, good. Was, I I thought it was uh, I thought it was incredible. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, but the, the, he, Letterman wasn't used to doing what we'd call newsmaker interviews. I mean, he had po politicians on, but then he'd joke with them and so on. He wasn't joking with Zelensky, was he? No uh, idea. No, I'm there asking. A, I'm, and there is the only one that's seen it. There's a what? surprising amount of humor in it for sure. Um, you know, they Zelensky told a joke, and it was um, it was very sobering. It had NATO in it, and it was. Uh, but but they talked about Zelensky's past a little bit as an entertainer. Uh, but no, I mean, obviously, humor wasn't the the centerpiece of the episode. But it was used, I think, as a bridge to kind of. Um, show commonality you know they were talking through a translator machine as well and it was uh but it was it was it was uh the thing i love about dave is that he can simplify things so much and it just it really really was sobering when you look at what we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis versus what daily life over there is mm -hmm. um yeah sobering wow. where was it filmed it was a uh, filmed in was oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Zelensky came to new york <laughs> uh, i know he didn't come to new york no, no, I it was filmed like in, in a subway station. Oh, subway station. Okay. Yeah, three hundred feet below. Where, where did you pick Chile. that up? Where did you pick it up? It's on Netflix. It's, it's on part Netflix. Of, oh, part of the series. Yeah, it's. Uh, it was. It was very, very good. I read an interview, a short interview with him, in which he said it was one of the weirdest interviews he ever had to do, because going into a war zone was not exactly the thing he did for a living. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, but I'm glad to hear it came out of okay. camp. I'm looking forward to watching it. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, you know, that's a that's a real get. Um, I, I, I not having a nightly show to do 
probably gave him the opportunity to do something like this because were he still doing the show in New York, I don't think he would have been able to go over there and do it, you know. Um, but no. you know, it. it uh, I I, I want to watch that. Looks good. You want to watch it, Marjorie? Does that sound interesting to you? It does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you think of Zelensky? Extremely well spoken. Um, extremely level headed. Uh, common sense. Um, still able to uh, smile, and you can, and and certainly, probably above all, inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, because you can see how he's inspiring people. Zelensky uh, wasn't that popular a president when he was when all of a sudden the war broke out, and then he's become quite popular because he really turned into a leader, which was the well, leader. He wasn't he, he wasn't that popular because a lot of people that were in the Ukraine at that time mm -hmm. were corrupt. They didn't like him because he was honest. He was. That's what he, but they were so sick of corrupt politicians running their country. That's how we got elected. They, they took this guy who played a politician on TV. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's an amazing story. Yeah, I got so a I curi curiosity. Char Charlie, who's the, our scientist, did you see the announcement today, the breakthrough in nuclear fission, fusion, that I they actually got a net gain in energy? I haven't, I haven't looked into or researched it, but okay. It looks pretty, pretty damn amazing. Well, what is it? Tell us. Don't leave us in suspense. Well, you know, we, we've been looking for a, a way to make nuclear fusion, not fission, as, mm -hmm. a, as the potential clean energy source. And yeah. for the first time ever, an, an experiment had a nuclear fusion incident that, that created an increase in energy over, over what was put in. Yeah. Which means... It put out more than you had, it took to produce the reaction. Before that, we've always had for all fusion reactions, we, it took more energy to create the reaction than you got out of it. By the way, Charlie, in case you don't know, is a nuclear physicist. Well, <laughs> astrophysicist. But astrophysicist, yeah. excuse me. He's, he's in the category of smarter than me with science. So I, I I respect his. But his he, view. He's so smarter than me that I thought it was it was a nuclear science <laughs> and, and it's astrophysics. Well, he comes from a nuclear family, but he's an astrophysicist. <laughs> Well, that's what's his what's his name is one of those right the guy from the new york uh yeah, neil degrasse tyson, neil Gr Gr Grass tyson. Yeah. yeah i figure that if you're a physicist that's enough is it, let me just ask you I don't, mean, <laughs> I don't mean any dissing out of this but is one of the qualifications to be an astrophysicist physicist being black <laughs> No, I think Neil is the only one that I know of. I'm sorry. Really? He's the unicorn in the field. No, no, there, there are more. There are more. There's a couple of black uh, you know, astronomers who work for NASA. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they make them work in a different lab. <laughs> he has a book out now, too. Yeah, he does. It's just, it's, you know, we keep talking about the, the, the electric cars, electric cars all the time. Yeah. And the two technologies of, of energy that, that really have the most promise that, that, that are usable and recyclable is hydrogen and, and what they're talking about with this nuclear fusion to create, to create the energy, because there's only so much lithium on the planet. Now, how dangerous is nuclear, how, how uh, a nuclear fission as opposed to uh, nuclear power? In other words, power kind of, is, kind nuclear of stuff. Power. Right. What? Well, the fusion, power, fission, fission. That's where they break the 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 molecules apart, and energy comes out. Fusion is where you're putting it back together and expecting more energy out of it. Oh, really? And fission is what safer? they both wrap up is with. It, is it safer? Yes. Well, uh, it doesn't in it much, uh, nuclear reaction fallout or, or waste. The, the the sun the sun is a fusion reactor, so that's what we're trying to do. Is the sun? <laughs> oh, okay. Did you know the sun is on uh, the sun is ten thousand degrees on the, the surface? Outside. Am I right about that, Charlie? The surface, the interior of the sun is twenty million degrees. Yeah, <laughs> where the actual reactions are taking. Well, place. if I go to the sun, I'm not going to the center of the sun. I'm just going to hang out on the surface. Yeah, make I'll sure you go at night. Go at night. <laughs> 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 Ha, ha, ha.
Thank you. He gets his he gets his scientific he gets his scientific information from Herschel Walker. He gets he gets the award. I think he got an A plus. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, well, it's like the old story about the guys who who said, "I got a plan." What? Well, we're going to steal the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> said, well, how are you going to steal the Eiffel Tower? He says, "I got a plan. We're going to paint it a different color." <laughs> no, but uh, no, but the sun I found out is only, uh, the surface is ten thousand degrees. Do you know how hot that? capsule was as it was entering the earth uh 4000 5000 so yeah. it was half the heat of the sun but that's half the heat of the surface of the sun that's pretty yeah. warm yeah yeah so anyway um my wife is always cold i tell her i'm going to buy our condo on the sun <laughs> yeah yeah well, the sun, uh, the sun's been our pal. The sun. I was thinking about the other day because they were showing pictures of the, they were shooting of the moon when they were up there, when it was up there, uh, and and I looked at it to begin with. I said, you know, I in a way, there's no reason to go there uh, because really, it's just a dead hunk of rock. All right, but there is a reason to go there because all the knowledge we're going to get about space and about traveling in space. A lot of it we're going to gain by trying to survive there. Okay. But uh, I look at it, just a big hunk of rock. And I'm thinking, you know, all my life, I've constantly looked up at that hunk of rock. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it has a romantic image, moonlight. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. You know, let's let's go for a walk, honey, out in this big moonlight, you know. Or, yeah. the, or it's a uh, the color shape changes every oh yeah the moon is the moon is something that man yeah. has always looked at even when we go back to the caveman you know everybody looked at it it was this thing up there and it's been our it's been our friend it's been our companion well yeah. without it we wouldn't have tides which means we probably wouldn't have had life develop the way um it did you i'm wondering i'm wondering if we didn't have a moon and we, 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 we would not have tides if we didn't have a moon? Well, we'd have the solar tides, but it's much, much smaller. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you know, I, I maybe I mentioned this last week. I, again, I was watching this documentary with uh, Morgan Freeman, who, as you know, it's the law. If you do a documentary and you got to have a narrator, it's got to be Morgan Freeman. And uh, he was talking about Mars, and you know, Mars used to be have a lot of water. It had oceans and yeah. it had lakes and it, it was full of water. Okay. And uh you say, well, okay, what happened? And what it turns out was it was the solar winds that sucked all the moisture out of Mars. And you say, Well, why didn't that happen to us? Because you know we're, we're somewhat the same size, uh, you know we and we we have all that water too. Why doesn't ours go away? The difference was, Mars did not have a hot core, and we did, mm. and that hot core spewed out stuff. I think that affected the solar winds and kept them keeps them away. Well, it gives us a magnetic field. Mars. Yeah, it gives us a magnetic field. That's the answer. That's yeah. what Mars doesn't have. Yeah, Mars yeah. doesn't have a magnetic field. So how do you use a compass on Mars? <laughs> you don't. You just don't. don't. have GPS mm -hmm. there, that's for sure. If, <laughs> oh, they will have GPS, I say, eventually. Yeah. Okay, would you would you backtrack a minute? Uh, the, the, the reason that we have uh, the ma magnetic fields are, are connected to the hot core of the Earth, is that? Yeah, the molten yeah. metal core of the Earth. You take any metal and you make it molten and you spin it, you're going to get a magnetic field. Wow. Okay. See, that's that's why we have a scientist on this show. <laughs> you know, my wife told me if I went to Pilates, I'd get a hot core. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's write that one down for him. <laughs> Do we keep the score? Yeah. <laughs> what is I get you moves. Yeah, Ed Edward Berger, one laugh. Mike Chisholm, one laugh. <laughs> Alex, nothing. You know. What was that, Paula? Is that a signed picture of Sarah, Sarah Palin? You're goddamn right it is. Oh, 
<laughs> I got her to endorse the Letterman podcast. It says to oh. the Letterman podcast, good oh. luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> she's she's adorable, Paula. Like a cockroach. Yeah. Boy. Well. Very cool. <laughs> in fact, I, what, what I hear, I heard an interview with her, oh, with uh, Tina Fey, and she had no intention of ever playing Sarah Palin, and they were doing Saturday Night Live, and they were looking for somebody to play one of their cast members to play a Sarah Palin. And on his way into work one day, Lorne Michaels saw the doorman who was at uh, at NBC, and he said, "By the way, he said, have you ever noticed that Tina Fey looks just like Sarah Palin?" <laughs> and that was enough for Lorne yeah. to make a call to Tina Fey, who was no longer on the show, saying, "Want to come back for a few episodes?" Yeah, and she said that turned out to be the most important single thing she ever did because that got her the most publicity. Yeah. She was perfect for it. It's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. In you fact, at one point, they finally had Sarah Palin on the show standing mm -hmm. next to her, and you couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. But anyway. I'll tell you in the movie Game Change, Juliana Moore did an awfully good Sarah Palin. Who? Juliana Moore. Yeah. What, what? Where did she play Sarah Palin? In the movie Game Change. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 But anyway, you know, so uh, let me see here. What else is happening that's uh, interesting? Well, that's about it. There's nothing interesting happening. <laughs> it, it, it's a pretty, if you think about it, it's a pretty dull world lately. I mean, we have a lot of t horrible things happening here and there, but that's, that's not, it, it doesn't make for a wonderful world. Is the that's Britney Grinder release too political? Hmm. Is it? Not really, but it is. It is because it is. Biden did it for political purposes, right? I mean, I don't think they should have gotten a release for her unless they got the other guy, too, as a part of the package. And I think the Russians would have gone for it because they need they want that guy. You know, what what's he called? The uh, the uh, merchant, merchant of death. death. Yeah. But he, he really, you know, when you when you think about it, the guy's been out of commission for more than 15 years. He has no more connections in the weapons world. They can't reactivate him. Put him back. Everybody knows who he is. Yeah, but it really was this, these people who, you know, this merchant of death thing is takes away from the old man who's been in prison for 15 years and is no longer useful. I'll yeah. tell you something. But, I mean, I wouldn't mind being called the merchant of death because then nobody would fuck with me. You know, <laughs> and I've been to Russia on business a couple of times. And when you fill out the visa application, it's yeah. absolutely clear. If you bring drugs into the country, you're dead. They're good. Yeah. They, they can they can execute you. In addition mm -hmm. to that, when you when you're on the plane, they warn you. There's every every reason to believe that if you brought anything into that country, you're going to have a penalty for it. Yep. Now, had I done it and was put in that camp, do you think anyone in America would even know what happened? No. Nope. Our consulates rule when you travel. I've I've worked in in a hundred plus countries. Oh, if it happened to you, if it happened to you, I'm sure maybe oh ten weeks from now, someone would say, "Where's Andrew Deutsch these days?" <laughs> <laughs> He's here. But but the 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 reality is, if if you look at our our international law, if you if you're imprisoned or arrested in a foreign country, the consulate's only job is to make sure you're treated humanely and you're properly represented. That's it. They yeah. visit you in prison. When I lived in Brazil for for all those years, I was down there. I so knew what, the guys. In the are you saying to me that actually Griner was kind of stupid? She was. Oh. She was. the The penalty that she got was less than what Russia would have given her. Now I'm really glad she's back, and I'm glad that she's not being tortured in a in a in a penal colony. And she's, you know, all, I, believe me, I, I have nothing against her. But but if if it was any else, anyone else who wasn't in the public eye, you would have never heard of it. The government wouldn't have given a crap about it. Right. But the we, other, we, this we, argument that keeps coming up that, that that really just toasts me with this thing is well, the reason that she was over there is because women who play basketball don't make the same as men, so they have to go there, and and that's what put her that's at risk. That's true, Andrew. But it's, true. It, it is true they make less money, but it's it's a business. You, the the NBA, which I'd never watch because I couldn't care less about <laughs> sports. Those guys make more money because they sell more tickets. It, one mean, has nothing he, to do with the other. 
I'm and sure the, she and the reality is in my overseas travel, every country I've been, the NBA guys are doing exactly the same thing she does. Let me ask you this question. When they when they told you that you can't bring drugs into the country because that's a no no, you'll you'll get convicted and thrown in jail forever or you'll be executed mm -hmm. or whatever. Were you told that by somebody? It's on the visa application. When you receive the visa, there's there's information that comes to you with that information. Do if they you ignore it, what the perils are. What, what, it, it, any 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 illegal drug? It's the same with this. When I was in Saudi Arabia, the visa there is even scarier. There, you know, they let you know they're going to kill you, and uh, they give you a list of things you better not have in your bag. For example, if you have an American magazine that has a picture of somebody in a bathing suit that's female, don't take it into the country because at customs you can get arrested for it. Wow. So you know you know these things up front if you if if you're a responsible. Well, my question traveler. is: after reading that kind of visa. Right. Why would you even want to go? Yeah, there? I had to for work, but I was very careful what I did and how mm -hmm. I did it. I brought a uh, instead of my normal smartphone, I brought a flip phone with no data on it so that they couldn't hack me when I was there. There's a whole you, you as a responsible adult. You you ask questions and you do the right thing before you go on a Russian visa. You you get given that you have to tell them what flight you're on and you have to arrive in the country within a specific envelope of time or you get denied at the border. Wow. Did, it's you get that rigid. Did you get advice on that, Andrew, before you yeah, went? I, when you apply for the visa. I, did, I applied for it on my own. I didn't even use a, a, a broker to do it. And all the information is made available to you, whether you do it through a visa, uh, what, I forget the name of the, the uh, I can't think of it in English, but the, the companies that get you your, help you get your visa. Yeah. Or if you get it directly, those things are all very but obvious. Her, her, her thing was marijuana oil, basically. Yeah. That's what they caught her with. And and she said, well, I didn't know this would be a... Well, what do you, you read the... No, but where, you were her the hand, where were her handlers? She's she's like a kid. You know, it's like... Yeah. It's about there somebody to tell her? By a yeah. But when you, when you go to play at somebody else's backyard, you got to follow yeah. their backyard mm -hmm. rules. Yeah. And I'm sorry that it happened. And I, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure she's a wonderful person and I'm glad she's back and she's not being tortured, but everyone should pay attention to how she got there. It has nothing to do with WNBA versus NBA it has nothing to do with, I didn't know you absolutely can't get one of those visas without wow. reading the papers. She had to have signed it because nobody can sign it for you. Mm -hmm. No exceptions you, to medications prescribed by your physician. Yeah, but but not if it's a restricted drug in other countries. Yeah, you know if I, if if I if I if I prescribed heroin for pain and I go to Russia, I'm going to prison. Yeah. Oh, by the way, let me Don't just break care. in here. Breaking news, Marjorie. I just got a notification on my watch. Preheating is done on our oven. <laughs> <laughs> did it. It's accomplished. The, the toilet like, call that needs to be flushed. Mm -hmm. And now there's one less cat in the alley. They're having dinner. <laughs> yeah, but I just want to mention that it comes through my. But it, I also get messages from my oven saying I need to be cleaned, and I get those as emails. On, on Friday, I was driving through Akron and thought to myself, "Shoot, if I knew where Paula lived, I'd take her to lunch." But I couldn't. <laughs> I don't have your contact info. Oh, send me your email. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. I was probably within two miles of you. <laughs> yeah, and so, Andrew was right about one thing. There's lots of NBA players that go play yeah. ball in Europe during the yeah. off season, and they make a lot more money than she makes. I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. When I when I was in Uruguay, I met the three black guys I met in Uruguay were all three NBA players who went down there to play because mm. they're all short and they needed some tall guys to, to win some. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me ask you this question, uh, uh, Marjorie. You, you can't listen to this. Uh, Marjorie said to me a couple of weeks ago, "Why don't we get each other a uh, Christmas present?" And I'm all for that. I, you know, and I'm I'm not cheap. I'm I'm willing to spend twenty thirty dollars on present. <laughs> um, and but it it literally this time of the year strikes fear in my heart. Because I am the worst guy to ask to buy a present. Yep. I don't know what I, I've been racking my brain. What could I possibly get Marjorie? And so far, the best answer I've gotten from anybody is how about an Amazon gift card? What? No. Come Would you on. mind getting a gift card, Marjorie? Yeah. See? How about, how about a box of earplugs? 
<laughs> Less arguing. You know what? What? What can I buy her? She has everything. No, 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 no. no. Oh, oh, Mike, so you got easy. a suggestion? It's so easy. You get her an experience. Get her tickets to a Broadway show. Get her a dinner and a hey, dinner a show, mom. something like that. No, wait, 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 hold on a second. Let's go to the expert, Marjorie. You want dinner and a show? Sure. <laughs> wow. but you see that isn't a good present and i'll tell you why because you if i get go. you a dinner and a show can i stay home <laughs> <laughs> if you want that's so, bad, so if, if i buy you dinner and a show i have to get the same dinner and a show for me yes so i'm not really giving you a present i'm giving us a present okay you can take a girlfriend. <laughs> that I might do. She'll, go, she'll take Paula. Yeah, I'll take Paula. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you know. Shecky, any good so, Broadway shows I should take Marjorie to? The Yiddish Fiddler on the Roof is good. The, the Yiddish Fiddler on the Roof? Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. Did you go see it? So I had about two years ago. Oh, wow. Oh. It's with subtitles, right? <laughs> Got into titles, yeah. Is it as good as the Yiddish titles, Scrooge? Whatever they call them, you know. <laughs> it's titles in a theater. They put them up on the walls or something. Yeah, above, above the, you know, the stage. The proscenium, yeah. Yeah, because I went and saw, what was it? Years ago, I went to see... Um, uh, uh, what do you call it, the La Traviata or something, and they had it, they had literally had the translation above the proscenium and on the sides of the walls too times um, but that's not bad so we, we could do that, would you like to see uh, the Yiddish classical film? music, by the way Funny Girl was awesome speaking of tickets I was talking to, to uh, my friend Larry Bubbles Brown, who's a comedian in San Francisco and he said that um, uh, what's his name? Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock yep. were doing a show because mm -hmm. they've been doing it all over the world. Actually, they're doing a show, and the tickets. You ready for this? The cheapest ticket, two hundred and eighty-five dollars. Wow! And yeah. the most expensive ticket, twelve hundred. Oh, yeah. One show, they and made they brought, seven. They brought they made seven million dollars. Yep. Wow. They brought Elon Musk out last night in San Francisco, and he got summarily booed. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Who brought him out? Uh, Chappelle. Oh boy. <laughs> oh well, you know, he he used to be my hero, you know, but not anymore. Shecky was right. I have to admit it. Shecky was right. Musk is a creep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's the worst yeah but you know he'll get us to mars eventually um, and who cares you know what i hate is this Neuralink thing he's got that he, yeah. he puts a chip in monkeys and then makes them tap dance or something what yeah yeah terrible he oh, supposedly yeah. how many chimps died as a result of it yeah. something like uh like uh a hundred or something like that. Good, that good amount. Was half of them. Half of oh. them they put him in died. Yeah, yeah. Are we gonna do human trials next year. Yeah, and he <laughs> he, he, he wants to put it in humans because he says it could you know save lives and do things like that. They'll make it happen. I don't know if I want a chip put in my head that's being controlled by Elon Musk. <laughs> you know that's the downside of it. The upside is it's, I get out. Huh? I have to put out so good night well, no, but, but, i know it's, yeah. i know but you're yeah. leaving we only got one minute left though <laughs> i know but i just got an important call oh okay Bye. good thing good we'll thing about the call. elon musk call <laughs> <it>. <laughs> well, the guy that has elon all the Earth hardware he has in his chest he's got to go he's got to go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i'll talk Bye, to you Jeff. later uh, <laughs> oh boy well, it's been fun today, you know. Just uh, I like this. It's just a casual Monday, and you people all kind of go out of your way to spend time with this, and I appreciate that, you know. 
I'm asking you to take time out of your busy Monday schedule. Like Shecky had a busy Monday schedule today, uh, but he had found time to come back and do the show, which I appreciate, Shecky. Uh, Charlene, always nice to see you there. Candace, always nice to see you. <laughs> Her name is first. Why is her name first? Why isn't your name first? Solves a lot of problems, my friend. Solves oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Smart man. Smart yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Charlie Wallace, great to see you again. Also, Andrew Deutsch, nice to see you. Len LaFrisco, terrific. Always, always a pleasure. Uh, uh, Paul Levin, you know we love you, Paula. We're going to see you soon. Hope so. Okay. Uh, Marjorie Miller. I hope I don't see you soon. Uh, Brian, Brian Neary. Be good, are you, how far are you from home now, Brian? I just passed uh, Livermore. I'm going through Livermore right now. Sorry. Will, sorry, Len. Will you stop in and have a beer? For I, know, I, I know. I know. I know. Well, wait a minute. Wait. Maybe he'll be able to see you. Yeah. <laughs> I just honked, but I don't know if you heard me. And, and just let you know, I, I, yeah. I went out of my way, just to let you know, I went out of my way to be on the show today. I'm just sitting around doing nothing. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I thank you for taking yourself <laughs> away from doing absolutely nothing <laughs> to call the program. And yes. Vernon Dunn, thank you so much, Vernon. I really appreciate it. And now, Edward Berger will do a traditional sign-off as he says... That's all, folks. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. Have a nice week. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Alex. Bye bye. Okay.